What's going on guys, Mikkel here, and I have a super interesting video for you today. In this one, we're going to be talking about exactly why we have not seen a settlement yet in this Ripple SEC case, but also why I believe a settlement is right around the corner, and there is no doubt in my mind a settlement will happen and will be the thing that ends this case. I'm going to be showing you guys some new information that I haven't really seen anyone talking about yet, and I think it's going to give you a very different perspective on how this case is going to end but not only that but why it's going to end this way i found some super cool documents so you guys are definitely going to want to stick around for this whole thing also guys if you are new to this channel or come here all the time make sure you like and subscribe it really helps me out so much in the youtube algorithm and let's jump right into it Alrighty guys, well, I want to start off by talking about why a settlement hasn't happened to this point in this case, but then towards the end of the video, I really want to transition to why I know a settlement will be the thing that does end up ending this case, and you guys are definitely going to want to stick around for that. I found some really cool documents that I haven't seen anyone talking about, and I think it makes it very clear that a settlement will be the thing to end this case. It's just a matter of time, and I do think it's going to happen a lot sooner than a lot of other people are thinking. I want to start off though by talking about why a settlement hasn't happened yet because I think it's pretty important to why we will ultimately see a settlement when this is all said and done. The first thing I want to point out is that the major reason we haven't seen a settlement yet is because there are still some massive motions pending in this case. One of them being is Ripple is trying to get documents from the SEC pertaining to some of its early decision making on different cryptocurrencies. Ripple wants to get these documents because they know if they get these documents and they show that the SEC had no idea what it was talking about back in the day in regards to cryptocurrencies, they'll be able to take this to the judge and say, look, the SEC based on these documents shows that they didn't know what a security was and wasn't. So how could we be breaking the rule if the person who makes the rules didn't even know what the rules were? These documents are very important to both sides right now. And until this motion is ruled on, it is going to be very hard for either side to really judge where each other are and who's going to have the settlement favoring each other. The next thing that has to be ruled on is whether or not Ripple is going to maintain its fair notice defense. Part of what I just explained to you is Ripple went to the court and said, hey, if the, if the SEC didn't know what a security was or was not back in the day, then how can we be sued? So the Ripple, so Ripple pleaded to the court and said, look, we want this case dismissed based on the fact that we were never told what the rules were, so how are we breaking the rules? The SEC saw Ripple going to make this move and realized how problematic it would be for them going forward in this case. So what they tried to do was strike down this argument and say, you should not be allowed to argue this for whatever reason. This has not been decided on by the court and is going to be a massive decision that will ultimately sway a settlement one way or the other. If Ripple wins, it will sway the settlement in their favor, and if the SEC wins, it will sway the settlement in their favor. The last major thing we have on the docket right now is the individual defendants, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse, are both trying to dip from this case. They're saying, look, almost every single case in which founders are charged, there's a case of fraud. There's no fraud in this case. Why are we being sued? We want to get out of here so we can focus on our business and not have to worry about being sued by the SEC. This is a pretty massive decision right here because it's really going to take a lot of stress off Ripple's legal team if they can stop fighting two battles at once. We're waiting for this to be decided right now, and this is really just the last dispute that needs to be hammered out before we can really start talking settlement. Now, the reason why we haven't seen a settlement to this point is because these these need to be ruled on. Neither of these parties went this entire way just to quit at the last minute. This lawsuit has been going on for over a year. If one side was ready to quit before all the evidence was on the table, it would have happened already. At this point, they're waiting. Both sides are waiting to see what each other has. They're going to look at all the evidence. It's all going to be laid out. And based on the judge's rulings, they're going to have a very good idea on where she's leaning and where this case is going to go. From here, once all the evidence is on the table, once they know every single decision and are able to make a clear path on how this is going to turn out, if it went through the courts, they are going to be able to come together and figure out which way the settlement's leaning. If all these go in favor of Ripple, then the settlement 
settlement will lean in favor of Ripple. If all of these go in favor of the SEC, the settlement will lean in favor of the SEC. But the next thing I want to show you is why I do know there will be a settlement, and this is really the most important part. It starts right here, and I want to start by reading you this tweet, and it said, and it says by Stephen Hubert, the SEC stated in him in speech that Ether is not a security due to sufficient decentralization. That speech has been referenced by the SEC as their official position in numerous legal cases. Therefore, every crypto which is as decentralized as Ether in 2018 is not a security. And this is the huge problem for the SEC right now. The SEC wants power over this space, and if this lawsuit who goes very poorly for them, they could lose all this power. They essentially are already kind of on the hook right now for giving Ethereum a free pass. What the problem is now is if this really gets out and people start to understand that they did give Ethereum a free pass, every single cryptocurrency who was around the time or was created around the time of Ethereum are going to say, wait, Ethereum got a free pass? We want a free pass. And this is what the SEC wants nothing to deal with. They want to go to every single project they can and say, oh, you're doing this wrong? Give me some money. Oh, you're doing this wrong? Give me some money. They do not want to give a free pass to a bunch of these different projects simply because they didn't make the proper rules and they let a project through the door that violated a lot of the rules they themselves put out. What this means is that the SEC, the only way that they could carry on with this Ripple case was to deny any of this ever happened, and we have the proof right here. The SEC says it has not taken an official position or taken no actions to say Bitcoin is not a security, Ethereum is not a security. And we know this is a blatant lie because all over SEC enforcement actions, they are taking credit for the Ethereum free pass speech, and the only logical reason they would be trying so hard to separate themselves from this free pass speech they gave to Ethereum is because they know if they gave Ethereum a free pass, they gave every single other cryptocurrency that was created around that time of before, or before then a free pass also. And we know the SEC is desperately trying to get away, get, o get away from this idea. And this is the reason they are going to be forced to settle, but I need to show you why it is so important that they settle and they do not let this case go the distance. Right here, I have a tweet thread with Jeremy Hogan himself, and this gets to the biggest part of this lawsuit, and that is not creating precedent for the SEC. The SEC wants to do everything it can to keep this case hush, hush hush and not let any other projects look back and use this case as a playbook for how to get out of litigation with the SEC. But I'm not a lawyer, so I wanted to go to an expert and figure out exactly how this works because I knew it would give me a better idea of how important a settlement would be for the SEC. So I say, please, Jeremy Hogan, this question has been killing me. If the judge throws out the SEC's attempt to strike fair notice, does this create precedent for future cases? If so, wouldn't they want to settle before this ruling? He says, yes, it does, and I think she allows the defense to move forward. The SEC would have to think really hard about if it wants to risk its ability to regulate some of these tokens by continuing the case, in my opinion. What he is saying is the SEC has a very tough choice going forward. If they do not settle this case, what is going to happen and they force and they allow the case to keep going is every single loss they take going forward is going to create precedent for future cases. This is what the SEC is terrified of. If this happens, then not only will this be a loss against Ripple, but this will be a loss for every other cryptocurrency the case they have going forward that is in a slightly similar situation to Ripple. The SEC cannot afford to let this happen. If the fair notice defense goes forward and the SEC does not settle this case, then every single project in a similar position to Ripple, in a similar position to Ethereum, like Stephen Hubert tweeted out in 2018, is going to be able to use this lawsuit as a playbook to get out of SEC litigation. You can clearly see this would be a huge issue for the SEC. So how do they get out of this? They settle. And I found this uh, article right here. This is actually from a law website. And it says right here, settlement 
and precedent conflicts because a settlement precludes a potential precedent. What this means is if, if you settle the case, it typically gets rid of any precedent. This is why approximately 90% of cases settle. The SEC is going to want to do anything it can not to create precedent. One loss is bad enough, losing every single other case in the future because you lost so bad in this one case is way worse. Ripple is a good company. They didn't do anything wrong. The SEC understands they are really suing Ripple based off tic tac -y laws. They didn't even know the answer to themselves. Therefore, what is the point in losing your control over the entire space when you could just settle this one case with Ripple and move on? This is what the SEC is going to have to do because they cannot afford to lose regulatory power over this entire industry. They will not let that happen. They would rather lose this one case with Ripple. I can't stress how important that is because this is the reason they are going to be forced to settle the case. They cannot create the precedent. And we know as of now, Ripple is in the driver's seat. Once they win these last couple documents, the SEC is going to be forced to come to the table and say, how are we going to hash this out? Because we cannot let the, this become the playbook for every other future project. The last thing I want to show you, and I believe this could be the timeline we're looking at. Obviously, no one can predict the future, but Stephen Hubert tweets out, end of discovery Wednesday the 19th. Thursday, the 20th, Sunshine Meeting, Approval Final Settlement. Monday, the 24th, Public Announcement of the Settlement. Once discovery ends, all the files are on the table. The sides are going to come together and hash this out. I believe that will give the X that will I believe that will give XRP the clarity it needs to be one of the only digital assets with undoubtable clarity by multiple US agencies to trade freely in the market. This is going to be huge for XRP investors and we are really going to be on the right side of one of the craziest trades ever. Guys, thank you so much for coming. I really hope you appreciate this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're still here right now and for now now, Mikkel out.